Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bar Shem El Shai, Bar Shem El Rakar Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone of Ruwa. And Shalom to the whole for let his Paya Allah. And um, I have a few uh, precepts um, on the topic concerning work. All right. And work is part of life. All right. Anything you do in life, it requires some form of work. Even when you deal with it on a worldly level. You have many people that desire to be rich or desire to get out of some form of a rut they may be in. They may say, oh, why, you know, why can't someone just, you know, pop up and just hand me a, a million pounds or, you know, get them out of the situation they're in just by the snap of their fingers as if it was, you know, magical, all right? But that's not how the world is designed, all right? Everything that the, the foundation of this earth was built upon work, all right? And that just streamlines that that ideal reverberates through everything within this universe, all right, that work is required. So I wanna get to that point and build upon it through these precepts and Lord willing you be edified. So there's a book of Sirach seven and fifteen which reads Hate not laborous work, all right? Neither husbandary which the most have ordained. Okay, so I'm going to run it back and break it down. So it says, hate not laborious work. So the most I exhort you to hate not through, you know, these, these scriptures to hate not laborious work. All right. This isn't a thing where you meant to, you know, be like, man, I hate doing this. This, this. this is what it is. All right. You have to deal with it. All right. And that's that's just, you, you know, a good thing you learn from playing sports if you play sports or just other situations in life there's only and even this is this shows you how much it's not even <laughs> true all right ultimately but you can only worry about what the things you can control all right and usually if, if you know a situation where you require you know food to eat you know shelter to cover you some resources and whatnot it requires you doing some work all right. The best example is um the book of James. All right, it basically tells you, you know, if a man, you know, if so, if if someone required, you know, some clothing, or they're cold and they require a blanket, I believe, you know, a covering. It, 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 how useless is it to tell them, look, go for, uh, yeah, go forth and be, you know, covered. That's just words. Words of wind. All right. There actually needs to be an action at work that transpires in order for that to, to, to happen for them to be made warm all right so it says hate not laborious work neither husbandary all right husbandary is dealing with going out into the field uh sowing and reaping all right and in doing the husbandry what happens it gives you food to eat all right resources a defense all right against circumstances that regularly come upon the earth all right it tells you that in the word that money is a defense and that's what husbandry will bring all right which the most have ordained now you know this is a fact of life all right but then also we have to bear in mind because the rock tells you about um uh leisure uh let me read so it's the book of Sirach, uh, 38 and 24. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure, all right? And he that have little business shall become wise. So he that have little business shall become wise. So this this scripture speaks to work within a carnal sense, but also is reflected in a spiritual sense, all right? Because the work that we're doing is a laborious work. It's a late, um, a laborious work, okay? The work is... The work of faith, right? The showing of faith. As I mentioned, James 2, it's the same situation. Your faith is shown in works. And we have the example of our forefather, Abraham, all right? He showed forth his faith in the Heavenly Father by being prepared to offer up Isaac, his son, all right? And many great works he'd done before that as well, all right? And it's the same thing. We have a spiritual work that we're ordained to do. And this is what we're doing in this time. Okay, when you actually go into that same Surah, the 38th chapter, it breaks it down about the, the smith that worketh um, over the metals, the anvil, 
rat, the the farmer who speaks of the fodder, these different, you know, um, roles within a city that allows it to function. They're, those are people of necessity, a rat. But then a wise man is of necessity and wisdom. And that's not going to come unless you labour in this work. And what's the labour in this work that you need to do? Going out on the highways and byways being the key of all, because that's how you can be appropriately tried in the, in in accordance with what the Heavenly Father has um, set up, right? Well, we told it to what um, be instant in season and out of season, all right? You can do videos from your house, all right? You can sit in front of a computer, all right, and do things like that. But guess what? Those that's like brownie brownie points, you know. That's bonus points, you know. Some tokens on top. But the main work is going out on the highways and byways, and and fighting against the elements. You know, presenting your body as a live, living sacrifice. Anything could happen. Someone that's been spying on you for a long time can come up and roll on you, and take you out. All right. You could be thrown into prison. All right. Put some cases. You could lose your job. People could call you crazy. All form of things can be. And how can you be really be a spectacle onto the world? At least you be out on the highways and byways. All right. So this is our work. This is our main work that you shouldn't hate. A laborious work that requires a lot. All right. It requires you coming in as a new man and forsaking all that you have. All right. Just like was said unto the rich man, you found it very difficult to do. So I want to read this example of, or should I, not example, this statement said by the Lord. All right. Exhortation of what we're to do. All right. So there's a book of John 4 and 31. All right, it says, it's In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. All right. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Have any man brought him out to eat? Ought to eat? All right. Yahusha saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. All right. So his meat, his main um dish you know um the main food that he was to eat the meat that he was meant to eat that was at the forefront of his mind was the will of the heavenly father all right and then it goes into matthew the sixth chapter about taking no food for your life where you shall be eat how you'll be clothed all these things but seek ye the kingdom of heaven and all things shall be added unto you that was a primary goal of every man right that the lord exhorted them to do and him there he is showing a great example of that right verse 35 say not ye there are yet four months and then cometh harvest behold i say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest all right so basically lord said you know you know about the sluggard will not plow, you know, due to, um, or rather, what I say, um, look unto the ant thou sluggard, all right? You have no kin, king, but basically, you know, does his work, has his meat in the winter, all right? And Lord was basically saying, don't say to yourself that, look, you you got time, I can relax, Lord delay if he's coming, all right? Because then when they say peace and safety, then sort of, the Lord suddenly, it's suddenly come, basically. All right, I feel, I believe I'm I'm butchering the hell out of that scripture. So let me read it quickly. First Thessalonians five and three, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman, and the, the sudden destruction is what the day of the Lord. All right, because the Lord said, "What well, I cometh as come as a thief in the night." As travail upon a woman with child, and this is likened on the book of Second Ezra, sixteenth chapter, likens this the um, you know the the um, the tarrying of this, as it would seem that it's tarrying, all right, of this destruction onto a woman in labour, a birth pains, but you're gonna, but even though you know like the the the, the kid who cried, uh, the child who cried wolf basically cried wolf and then when the wolf actually appeared no one took heed all right 
this ain't the heavenly father crying wolf. It's actually going to happen, all right? It's a thing of you should be on point waiting for it to happen as opposed to hearing it a few times and saying to yourself, um, set the book of Second Peter, the third chapter, all right? Since our fathers fell asleep, all things remain as normal, all right? That shouldn't be your attitude. Your attitude should be, look, the Lord is coming at some point. All these things that's happening, i got to look for the measure of time diligently within itself to see what signs are to come. All right, and tra as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. All right, and that's why it's of great importance that what you do the work, all right, and stay doing the work. Because what does it say in the book of Luke 9 and 62? It says um, about the man that um, removing his ha removeth his hand from the plows. Um, wow. Yeah, my memory is just, it's a Satan, man. Mm. It's a book of Luke 9 and 62. Uh, no man, and Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of the Most High. Alright? So when you put your hand to the plow, you basically take on his work. Alright? You, you've, you've entered into the, this faith. Alright? And basically, you turning back to the turning back, you've turned back like what Lot's wife, all right, and looking back to the world and gone back into the world, and then doing that, what are you doing within the world, all right? You're basically you you take making, uh, the, the Yahweh Shai sacrifice, you know, you're mocking it basically, all right. So let's read on, uh, John four, and um, thirty six. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sing you to reap that wherein ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. Right. The men that, what, who are the men that? Uh, labored that we've entered into their labors. All right, starting with, um, uh, Elder Ab um, High Priest Abba Bivens, all right. High Priest Yaquab, High Priest um, Ariya, King Marshal. Uh, those are the men's works that we've entered into, all right. High Priest Shah, we've entered into their works, and then the apostles of Great Millstone, headed by Apostle Taha, Apostle Kabar, Apostle Rakar, uh, Apostle Aramlub, all right, and the Elder Bishops of Connecticut, on down, man. Okay, we've entered into their works, all right, and we're gonna we're gonna basically reap with in their works, all right. That's the work that we're doing. So now this is the book of Revelation twenty. I'm gonna start with verse twelve. It says, "And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before the Most High, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life." And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And the dead and hell delivered up the dead um, which were in them. And they would judge every man according to their works. All right. So this is only where it's going to be. All right. It starts with hating not um, laborious work. You know, you got to work to eat. If you want to survive in this world, you got to, you got to work. Even if you don't want to work, you know, a general nine to five, you know, the cliche forms of work, you go, you may have to work in terms of criminality, all right? You're still going to work. That's that's the general physic, physics. That's the way the Heavenly Father designed everything to work, all right? By you working, all right? So it says, on, so I read that last part again, and they would judge every man according to their work. So the works that you've put forth, they're gonna you're gonna be judged according to it. It tells you in the book of Corinthians about every man's work is gonna be tried by fire to see if it stand. Whereas some put gold, silver, precious stones, and others put hay, stubble, and um, 
and wood, I believe. All right. Yep. So it's it, First Corinthians three and twelve. Now, if any man build upon his foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, all right, it's gonna be tried by fire, and that's only this time that's being spoke of, all right, because right now we're dealing with the work of the heaven of Yahweh Shai. The work is being, you know, being everyone's being, but everyone in his faith is being baptized by the furnace of affliction, so that they don't have to, because everyone's got to go through that fire, so they don't have to be baptized literally in the furnace um, of the destruction, all right? The lake of fire, all right? That's the that's the difference between the two works because all have to go through that fire to enter into the kingdom, all right? So reading on, it says, um, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, all right? The second death, the first death being what? The, when the heavenly father um, destroyed the earth by way of water, both water and fire cleansing agents, all right? But this time the world's going to be cleansed by fire, all right? Being a second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And the main point being everyone was judged according to the works. So the works you do, they're going to be what you're going to be rewarded for. So there's people within this world that they're laboring to do things to, to, to earn money and things of this nature. But guess what? They're being awarded accordingly. But there's there's you know there's there's a you know a uh an instant rule, you know, instant not even this it ain't even instant. You, you get a reward in this moment, but then there's an ultimate reward when the end of this world comes. So this is first Corinthians three and twelve. Now if any man build this upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work and what of what sort it is if any man's work abide which he have built thereupon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer a loss but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire all right so that's it man your works are going to be tried by fire so you got to do the works you got to do the labor of the lord that's it man so with that i pray you're edified to the next one shalom shalom